so you don't have to move the computer. Up next, we have Dr. Javier Malcolm Barney. Dr. Barney obtained his medical degree from the Universidad Autónoma de Guadalajara after earning a master's degree in biology from the University of Texas San Antonio and a bachelor's degree in psychology from T Texas State University. While earning his medical degree, Dr. Malcolm completed humanitarian work with the Green and Red Cross. He is the Chief Medical Information Officer and Chief Data Officer at DHR Health. He currently serves as DHR Health's Executive Board Administrator Member for Evidence-Based Medicine, Utilization Review, Emergent Department, Critical Care, Data Governance, and Clinical Informatics Steering Committees. He co-founded a medical scribe company that partnered with prospective students pursuing careers in medicine to work for high acuity ERs, primary care, and cardiology specialty clinics. During medical school, Dr. Malcolm developed and implemented a training program to prepare third and fourth year medical students for the USMLE Step 2 Clinical Skills Medical Board Exams. He also uh, recently co-authored a joint publication with UTRGV and DHR physicians on dosing schemes for thyroid replacement therapy after thyroidectomy. Help me and welcome Dr. Javier Malcolm Barney. Testing. All right, it works. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm going to roam. Went in Rome, right? Um, it is a privilege to be here, be able to speak with y'all. I know y'all been here all day, so I appreciate your patience. And um, let's jump right to it. Medical information technology. This is a very broad, uh, I'm going to touch on a few points. It's extremely broad. There are much more facets to. Uh, you know, the whole medical industry, you know, you have hospitals, you have clinics, you have, uh, you know, pathology specialty areas, you have surgical centers. I mean, it's really uh, very wide and broad. I'm currently an administrative physician. And so, again, I work within the hospital, but within the admin suite. Um, and then there are consulting groups that do what I do. It's, it's, uh, it's extremely, you know, broad based, which is great, right? Because I, that increases the likelihood of job placement. And um, with variety, you're going to be able to, you know, talk to your students, have them research a bunch of stuff, and you know, the career pathways. Um, it's not just one channel to get to the one place, right? And so this truly, uh, you know, opens up the venue. Right here, you're going to see um, uh, the four topics I'm going to kind of touch on today: informatics, which I'm currently in the actual DHR informatics dress code. Um, Business intelligence, which is your reporting and analytics, uh, CDI and coding, and then health information management. Okay, uh, I'm really, you know, I'm not going to read off the, the paradigm here, but basically, you know, the, the broad term at the very top of what is uh, your medical information, right? It's dealing with patient information, HIPAA, I'm sure you guys have heard of that before, uh, things of that nature, and so it's super broad. You're talking about data, 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 right? And how we access that data, how we protect that data. Uh, there's laws, regulations, um, every piece of, from government to you know, the front office clerk in the front uh, has to deal with some level of medical uh, information technology. A quick little kind of update here, what I've what I've kind of previewed is uh, these specialists deal with the records, data management systems, uh, health systems, electronic medical records, to even email systems. Believe it or not, uh, Outlook itself for our hospital is a system and an ecosystem that has to deal with HIPAA information and information in general uh, as far as how we communicate with each other in a proper management. Okay, so let's get to it. Clinical informatics. Uh, this one, obviously, very close to my heart. I am the chief medical information officer. I, I deal with a lot of different paradigms within the hospital. But informatics is uh, something that I deal more with. And so with that opportunity, here's the, the wide availability to get there. And so have any of you all ever heard of the term clinical informatics or clinical informatics specialists? So I'm trying to engage you guys because you've been here all morning, right? <laughs> well, what you see here is a wide base. So 
I mean, I'm a physician. Uh, there are nurses in here, LVNs. Uh, we have complete technical individuals that learn medical, uh, medical terminology that can enter the ecosystem. Uh, they are master's programs. You know, you have an RN that can go and get a master's or a uh, bachelor's degree in informatics, informatics technology. Um, different ecosystems use it uh, for, you know, again, we use Cerner at our hospital, which is our electronic medical record. Uh, that's kind of what the physician uses to type in orders. You know, you have to keep the patient's chart in there. Think of it as the, the fancy system, you know, uh, filing cabinet that we use, right? And so, you know, they're, well, obviously we, we purchased this from Cerner Corporation, so they have an entire informatics team. You don't even have to work in a hospital. You can work for this huge place in Kansas. Uh, Epic is another huge vendor. Uh, you know, you can work for them. So it's, it's cool because you're gonna see these people, not just in hospitals, you're gonna see them in very large clinics as well. You can see them in these private companies, uh, spin-offs that make, you know, patient tracking systems, which is something that I've been able to develop as well at DHR. And so um, very broad based. Um, so you can see troubleshooting systems, overseeing installations. Um, I wanna give you some real world applications as well. Uh, you'll see nursing, pharmacy, core, and PIES. And what I mean by PIES, it's called process improvement specialist. And so one of the greatest things uh, that I love about clinical informatics is these team members uh, from broad and from all over. You know, again, a lot of them are nurses, a lot of them are LVMs, some are physicians. Um, we have to think of a way to make healthcare easier, right? And so everything you do is for the patient. And so if there's a process improvement and we see that you know, by ordering something a certain way, partnering with pharmacy, partnering with uh, different ancillary departments, we're able to capture a better flow of information for the patient, you know, that's continuity of care. And so imagine, um, you know, I'm gonna touch base on it later with CDI and coding, but what happens is, if we don't document properly, and I leave, my shift's over, I go home, and I go to sleep, and the next physician comes on board, or the next nurse, or the next tech, or you name it, you know, you need the continuity of chart. All these parameters help have the quality of care impacted. So this is one of those things where I love it because you're able to impact healthcare, not from just bedside. You're able to do it, you know, several levels away where you're actually increasing the quality. And so these are things that I share with my team. I share success stories all the time because I need them to make sure that you know, the, the difference they make is huge. It's extremely important. It also makes physician, nurses, uh, anybody who's documenting at the bedside life a lot easier and better um, because, you know, again, you don't want to spend, we call it pajama time, but when clinic's closed, physician stays and continues to document. Right, and so in order to do these things, uh, we're trying to make the process a lot easier. And I wish we had artificial intelligence and the fancy Iron Man uh, Jarvis to do everything that I do, right? Uh, you know, in the background, but that's just kind of not the. Not, it looks really cool on TV, but it's not. We're not there yet, in other words. And so these specialists and these informatic team members uh, are that gap and that liaison between. Any questions so far? Okay. These are the majors. I put, you know, top jobs. Um, next one, uh, I'm gonna bounce forward to the, the labor market in a moment here. So this is health information management. This is the other piece of it. And so we actually have an HIM department, that's what we call it, uh, at DHR Health. And they're the ones that are able to uh, reconcile, you know, we still have years of paper documents. And so we have to keep things on file from seven to all the way 21 years, right? And so if you guys remember all the doctor's offices that had the, you know, the back rooms with the, the just the filing cabinets and those, those living doors of paper that went left and right. And so with these teams, if we get individuals that come in from the outpatient setting into the inpatient setting, we still have to scan in a lot of documents. And so the HIM department is extremely important in any facility. It doesn't have to be a hospital. It can be an outpatient clinic, you know, it can be a third party vendor, you name it. These individuals are the ones on the ground that are able to determine the necessity, the need, and how we have to document information and where we store it and, and you know, legalities to it. Uh, these are just some of the areas of it. Again, uh, you're gonna see them in hospitals, pharmacies, medical offices, administration. Uh, these are some of the titles associated with it. Um, you know, I don't wanna bore you with just naming 
Did it go off? Hello? Okay, there it is. Uh, naming just directly off the screen, but you know, I feel if I give you a real world application and what team members do, you can at least process that and when you talk to it, to your, t to your students, um, you can answer a little bit more. This is the current job market for informatics and for health information, so 8%. That's pretty big. It's not going anywhere. Uh, uh, there's another statistic um, that showed a, an actual, like a round number, and it was around 67,000 jobs that are needed, and that was by 2026. And so this is something that, it's growing. It's a growing market. Uh, believe it or not, you know, you hear burnout a lot. It's ringing in a lot of ears, right? And so you have nurses, you have physicians, you have all types of support and ancillary staff, and they're moving into informatics and these other jobs that allow them to breathe, uh, work on processes, because it is rewarding in a sense. And so, um, again, very, very booming job market. Before I move on, any questions? So silent. <laughs> Going once, no hands? Okay, rock and roll. I talk really fast, sorry. Let's see, business intelligence. This is my other love child. This is amazing. So this one, humongous. Um, I don't want to have anybody poach the hospital you know, workflow, but informatics and analytics is every industry. Everything, literally, everything is data. We, we see something called KPI, right? So there's a metric on every, there's a metric on how many steps you take. There's a metric on, um, you know, if you woke up and you ran to the bathroom and I have a sensor on the inside of your door and I saw how many times you went to the restroom versus how many times you went to the refrigerator and it gives me that metric and actually, I can actually relate that back to uh, depression, I can relate that back to activity levels, uh, obesity, you name it. So these are, these are extremely important parameters that we run analytics on everything and so the business intelligence team, again, is very wide. You can get bachelor's degrees, you can get uh, statistician's degrees, you can get a two-year uh, certification. I didn't put certifications, I know you guys have a packet about it, but it's very wide base. We have, as well, uh, part of our DHR business uh, intelligence team, we have nurses that do a lot of integrity and data validation. I mean, this thing is huge, right? Because I just can't give you a packet of info, we have to validate it. So you have a whole team of people who validate, right? Uh, we prefer people with clinical backgrounds with that because when you're looking at data, there's an important function where you have to know where it came from, right? And if you know how the clinic works, how the flow, how everything is happening, you're able to put the dots together properly. And so that is one of the bigger uh, pieces of it. So there's data mining, um, you know, reporting, visualization. You guys ever see those fancy dashboards uh, on TV, on, you know, CSI, all these shows? You know, these are real things, actually. You know, we use them in our, in, in our ecosystem here. And at DHR, we, the team has you know, gone above and beyond, um, and we've created a lot of things that, again, they impact healthcare. You're not at the bedside, and this is something important. I love to share this piece over and over again because to make a difference, you don't have to p touch the patient every time. Sometimes, globally and systematically, you can affect thousands of patients in a single second by actually doing things like that and doing uh, change management and process improvement. And so these are the minds behind it. Again, hospitals, research, medical offices, administrators, uh, you know, informatics, analytics, these two things coincide together. You'll have data analysts, administrator, business analysts, I mean, you name it. And then, you know, we have individuals that come and go from, you know, Toyota plant, for instance. Uh, they came up with an algorithm that Cerner adopted, our electronic medical record. And so it was a business analyst that noticed it and he took that algorithm and applied it to how we process information for patients. And the next thing you knew, you know, we were seeing outcomes and we were able to put algorithms together and do evidence-based medicine uh, and now actually view a population. So fun fact, I'm a type one diabetic. I've been one for now 30, I turn 40 tomorrow. So let's see, I've been 33 years, type one. I always feel like I'm doing okay right? But until I see it mapped out on my CGM, which is a continuous glucose monitor, it kind of shows me my patterns. So that's the most important thing with analytics in any type of healthcare industry, pattern recognition. That's how we come up with evidence-based medicine as well. 
you know, it's, if it works for one, then it works for 10,000, then it works for 100,000, it works for 2 million people, you know, you're able to statistically come in and be able to make true process improvement and now, you know, change an entire ecosystem or a whole nation on how you, you know, adopt medicine. And so these are the individuals behind that. Because without these people, you cannot present that information and you can't even quantify it. Huge. 25%. And that's not just healthcare. That's just a broad across, across the, the piece. Healthcare is about half of that. Uh, we don't have enough of them, legitimately. I could hire 100. There's hospital systems out there that have 25, 30, 40 hospitals, and their IT slash business intelligence team are in the hundreds of people. And it's still not enough. They're still backlogged with work. And so this is something that, again, I feel is a huge opportunity for students coming out. And again, there's different levels. I didn't put them here, but I mean, you can get bachelor's, master's, PhDs, certifications. You can do online courses. You can learn programming code, uh, Python, SQL. You can do all these things, and they build your resume, and you can move forward. And there's a lot of information online for this. So I'd be happy to, question? No, for sure. Believe it or not, it can just be technology itself. There are medical aspects to it. Uh, again, medical terminology, things, I mean, there's some smaller pieces that you end up digesting over time, and that's something that you can do, a one-off course. And honestly, we, we teach that in-house. You know, we, I've picked up a super strong coder. You know, he knew nothing about, you know, what these, you know, medical terms were, but he picked it up over time. You know, it's on-the-job training. We do that, too, you know, at Teji. And so it's not boxed in, but that's why I mean that where it's so diverse and, you know, some of the strongest people never, never worked for a hospital before and then they, they come from banking institutions and they know how to run these uh, extremely complex algorithms. I mean, they're complex to most of us layman folk, but, you know, to them it's their natural language and, you know, and that's the future. Some of these, you know, some of these uh, younger generations are, I mean, this is like, they can write programs for your Android phone and for your iPhone like that. And so those are the people that hospitals are trying to scoop up now. And we, we would love to invest time, training, and, um, you know, just personalize them and get them, get them together and make them, you know, if the hospital ends up being a stepping stone for them to go to greater places, it's what it is. But if not, you know, we keep them in-house. And the, the work is so wide and diverse that, you know, right now currently we're working on a project that has business intelligence and informatics working on the same platform, trying to use um, your Apple Watch information. And so, you know, that's a huge venture, right? I'm going to just put this out here. I am kind of lost. My sister's a doctor. Sure. So I understand the programming where you're saying it's mm -hmm. growing it. For a layman who literally has avoided going into the medical field at mm -hmm. all costs, because my sister took her to London, yeah. Um, Give me the most basic entry point in this. Would that be like the coder at a doctor's office doing this? Even more basic. Even more basic than that, actually. Like the typing in your information piece? Yeah, so we have like front, front staff clerks, right? So let's say you, you go to the ER. That person at the front who's like, hi, how are you? Why are you here? Right. Um, and next to them is our, an RN and a nurse who will triage you. Uh, when the appropriate time is, but that individual, there is no certification, so which is great. You can get your feet wet, get in. Uh, next step up from them would be now uh, somebody who has to look at insurance information and things of that nature. Not so much a coder, but somebody who's gathering information. Now, in the HIM department that I showed earlier, that one has different levels too. That one can be somebody who scans information in, uh, again, doesn't require any type of certification, just the willingness to work and to learn, right? And then from there, it can go up. We, I mean, again, there's... So you at the top take the information that the people at the very bottom put in, and all the lab testing that's been done and clear, so that the went into the system, and all of that comes together in massive data, and then some genius programmer out there figures out with these doctors how to get it better medicine. Basically, I like that. You know, I'm gonna use that next time. I like that. 
No, it is, it is, and, and that's the wonderful part. And so, um, you know, somebody in my seat, for instance, is someone who lives it, breathes it, seen medicine, um, been in all the different aspects of, you know, different hospitals in the United States and two different countries. Um, and so I'm able to tell you, hey, that data is great, but it doesn't, that doesn't match up actually. That's not what happens in the actual room. So now we have to go back and look at the actual data points and we got the wrong thing. We chose the wrong KPI because those two, when you take this plus this, it does not equal that. Even though it gives you an output and it gives you a number, you know, I'll, I'll use for instance, uh, start and stop times in a surgery, right? And so it's very important to look at how long it took for, let's just say, you know, you get your gallbladder removed. If the standards two hours start and stop, but then all of a sudden we start seeing all these people start doing three, four, five, and you have these outliers, well, it's an opportunity to go have a conversation with them. And, you know, no one's saying anyone's at fault, but it'd be great to be like, hey, what's your method? Or, oh, it's because your patients had, you know, a higher risk and they had more comorbidities, right? And so it's things of that nature. But in that seat, what if we looked at the anesthesia start versus the cut start, right? So that time may be elongated, you know, maybe half an hour or 20 minutes, but it still counts. It's still outside of the evidence-based medicine window. And so that's where different seats, nurses play a huge, even bigger role than somebody like myself. For business analytics, this 25% is, 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 yeah. is a little bit, no, it's, it's, it's them too, but it's a little bit more of the analyst, where you actually either can go to a community college, uh, get a certain certification, you can go um, you know, get a bachelor's degree in, in computer science, uh, there is uh, statisticians degrees, there's, I mean, that's the crazy thing, to get to anything analyst, um, it's very, I mean, it's a huge, it's just great. It lets them go through different avenues, right? Uh, and then they can work in different fields. Uh, we have, again, nurses that burn out and want to go into this, or they're not burned out, they just, they just want to grow. You know, they want to add to the repertoire of information, and so they want to go and, and travel into these little ecosystems. Now, to your code, you said Cody and Billion earlier, so this is a whole other realm. Uh, very important. Uh, CDI, medical billing, and coding. So CDI stands for Clinical Documentation Integrity. Um, I'm gonna touch point on that one, because here at DHR we have a mix of a lot of uh, LVNs, RNs, and actual uh, physicians who, who work inside of that department. The crazy thing about it is, remember earlier I told you the story about documentation? What if I don't document anything? And then I wrote two things, and then I walk away. And then somebody else comes in, and they're like, hey, is this guy allergic to anything? And the guy's passed out. I can't talk to him. I can't find mom and dad or brother or sister. You know, there's no friends here. What, what happened? What did this guy do? So then do I start the whole process over again? Or do I go over, you know, very good documentation? And so these specialists, the CDI folk, there are different tiers of accreditation that you do have to get. Um, and many of them start with a baseline of a, a bachelor's degree or an RN or some type of certification, but then from there, there's different tiers. Again, there's information given out, uh, and I'd be happy to sit one-on-one -on -one with anybody who wants more, uh, more additional information. But the importance of this one, again, they're not at the patient bedside, but they're concurrently looking at the charts in the inpatient or outpatient setting. And so if I find a gap or a hole or something's just missing, I contact the physician. And at DHR, we have a pretty nifty form of contacting them through something called Everbridge um, or through the electronic medical record, and it sends them a ping. It's like, beep, beep, hey, man, you forgot to document something. Please don't leave until you do so. It's important, right? And so, you know, most, most, most clinicians are actually, they're very responsible, and they do do it. Um, and then the other layer is going to be your medical billing and coding. So, again, that's very important. Um, you know, I hate to touch on money. Uh, but we got to be real, um, you know, hospitals, clinics, they got to keep the lights on, you know, insurance companies require all these very, very, very strict guidelines to pay people, and in order to do that, you have to code properly, and so medical billers, they are more based on ICD-10 codes and, and also medical terminology. Those do not require a, I mean, I think it requires a GED or a high school diploma, but then from there you can get a uh, just a quick 
you, you basically do an online course to get to sit for the exam. That's how CDI is as well. And uh, you're able to do that. Those jobs uh, are also growing. There's a huge need for it. You don't have to work in a, in a hospital uh, or a clinic. You can work for insurance companies, you know, surgical centers. I mean, it's, it's huge. Uh, Cerner, Epic, these huge electronic medical records, 3M, I'm sure you guys have heard that buzzword. When, before I ever went to into anything in medicine, 3M to me was the, the tape. <laughs> and then they put coats on cars and all kinds of, well, 3M owns like 70% of the healthcare business too. And so a big part of that is a medical billing um, software system that these people use. And so believe it or not, medical coders and billers also work for them on their end because they have to do process improvements and test out the functionality, go teach people in these offices how to do it. And so very wide, wide, uh, you know, career choice as well. So I wanted to put this up here because this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, this I will read off, you know, poor records can impact patient care and healthcare facilities by affecting continuity and quality of care. That's a big thing, continuity and quality of care. That's why when you go see your PCP, you try to go see the same PCP. Why? Because they know you, they get to know, they see you, that your family, they know your dynamics. All that stuff, it bleeds into documentation, into specialists, right? And so poor records, again, equal, uneven healthcare. You know, there's gaps, missing information, right? And so that's where CDI, you know, coders and billers, they also reach out. It's a very important back-end piece to it. Uh, the concurrent review of documents, you know, by a CDI specialist enhances communication between all providers involved in the patient's care in a timely manner. That's the other big thing, timely manner. Um, and at the end of it, between clinical informatics, doing the processes, improving workflows for physicians, we want to give the time back to the patient, nurse, patient, you know, tech, patient, physician, versus them being behind a computer the whole time, doing all these orders and losing face. So all of these things, these ecosystems, evidence-based medicine, all these things bring us back to that. And without all these individuals that I've talked about earlier, you don't get there. Okay, and so that's why it's so important. And obviously it increases positive outcomes uh, for the patient, that's what matters. You know, all of these things, we're, he we're always here for the patient and nobody else. And so we always wanna process and prove it. And so every, anything that we're able to move the needle in a positive direction, it's for the patient. And so all these other jobs do it. And so, uh, you know, that's why you don't, I was always taught when I was a kid, you know, oh, you, you have to be a doctor or a nurse if you ever wanna help people, you know, or a fireman or a police officer. You know, they never translated it into the other, into the other areas. And I wish they would have, you know, to be honest with you, because I think, I think that would really, uh, you know, pick it up. And the other really cool thing about all of this is remote work from home, right? Online college, online university, online accreditation. These, you know, this new COVID world, um, and, you know, it's not, I, you know, in my personal opinion, you know, this has opened up Pandora's box, just like, you know, 9-11 uh, did for the 10 hours. And so it's going to be a whole new world. We're all, uh, you know, adapting to it. But it's cool to think that, you know, when you talk to your, your student body, you know, there's still hope. There's grow amazing growth and hope, and they don't have to feel like, man, I wanted to do that one thing, and I can't. You know, I can't. I can't go to college, or what if I get sick? Or what? This, these are things that are all capable in person and online. So again, a very I think that's a positive message, uh, you know, where they can continue education uh, without having to worry about um, you know those other factors. So medical billing, CDI, and coding has uh, I couldn't find an actual percentage from the U.S. labor statistics, but I did find twenty-seven thousand uh, in this time range. So again, booming. You know, these are, these are uh, things where you want job stability, you want to be able to get into the workforce, uh, not worry about, uh, you know, losing your job, things of that nature, and being flexible. And this is one of those realms that, uh, you know, offers that. Questions? Don't all go at once. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time.